I got two big old points tonight. Brother Travis, you still praying about what to do? How many is going to pray, Brother Travis? He's seeking to start. You know, we need some good churches in, in the Nashville area, Lebanon and Woodbury. And, uh, and you pray for him about that. And uh, we'll read the text, verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has, have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before who? That they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Our Heavenly Father, help me to rightly divide these truths tonight. And give, give me hearts that are receptive, ears that are open for truth. I know we're so easily distracted, but I pray supernaturally that you would cultivate appetites for spiritual things the next few minutes. And the weight that I carry tonight, I pray you'd help me for a little while to set it aside and uh, to focus on this preached word. Help me to preach, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're talking about what many have termed theologians the Sermon on the Mount. And we've uh, introduced this last week with the truth that it's not necessarily a sermon. Now, I'm not criticizing the text. It's all right. It's all accurate. But nowhere does he call it a Sermon on the Mount. It's more like uh, preparation for the ministry. He's preparing 12 disciples if you study the previous verses. And by the way, y'all know you don't make a truth out of a uh, pretext, out of a isolated passage. You got to look at the whole story uh, in order to rightly divide truth. And so you look at it and we find that the multitudes, the big crowds never made it to where Jesus was on this mount. But it was the disciples that followed to the mount. How many know that? How many know that you got truth? That's what happened. Multitudes were down here. They waited on him. But the disciples followed. So he's preparing men for an earthly ministry. We looked at these uh, few verses that precede our text tonight talked about what we've been called the Beatitudes, the blessed man, and how that we're going to be blessed if certain things are present in our life. There'll be blessing for things that are absent in our life. But now we introduce another thought. I would, If you've got a Schofield at the top of that division, it's called the similitudes. Not the Beatitudes, but the similitudes, the likenesses of the believer. He tells the 12 disciples, I want you to be effective, but the way you're going to be effective is you've got to... You, you got to realize what you are, who you are, what you're trying to do. The Bible said in verse 13, you're the salt of the earth. Now, I want you to jot down something about the salt. We'll look at the salt in just a little while. I want you to see the worth of the salt, the work of the salt, and the warning to the salt. When I look at the work of the salt, I want you to see that it's, uh, it's a life giver. Now, we don't put much emphasis on it, and I know that fellow wrote me a whole page against salt. I wish he knew something about the Bible. Help me now. Let me tell you what you'll do if you don't have salt in your body. You'll die. Life is connected with salt. Now, because of the abundance of salt now, the presence of salt physically... It's pretty cheap for us. I mean, we, we abuse salt. We put it on tables and, and play jokes with salt. But if you realized how valuable it was to your body. In other words, if your body's absent from salt, just like water, you're going to die. Sooner or later, you're gonna, they check you. They, 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 when you go, they look for certain things uh, as they test your, your body fluids or your blood. And they're looking for certain levels of salt. That has to be in you. That is a necessity for life. Now, if there's going to be life, there's got to be salt. The world today is having little new birth. 
There's little life today because there's little salt today. I mean, Christians are, are become very isolated and concentrated. And by the way, where all the salt's in one spot, it'll burn the grass up. Uh, we got a messed up mentality about it. Just go make you some homemade ice cream and dump the brine out in the front yard and you're going to have a hole that big. Because too much in one place will kill the ground. And nothing will ever come up from there. The way the enemies of God's people, the Old Testament, would punish a, a enemy, they would salt the crops. That was round up. Too much of it concentrated to kill. The problem today is we've only, I, the Christian salt's been concentrated. And we only get it at a Christian school. We only get it at a church on Sunday. And it all comes together and it's burning the grass up. But we're not savoring the salt. Hey, we're not using the salt as it's been intended to be used. Amen. Amen. Salt, the right kind. The salt in its right now, standing and setting, it brings life. It brings life. I thought about not only the life of the salt and its worth, but I thought about the length of it. It's only worth when it stings. The worth of the salt. I mean, if it gets, if it loses its savor, I'm, I'm getting ahead a little bit on my warning, but I want you to see there's a worth to it. The work that salt does, it makes it makes it makes it a value. I mean, it's a preservative. Amen. The worth of this salt. Uh, there's a lot I want to say about it, but the worth of it is based on results. Now, I'm going to tell you, the right kind of salt's going to get reaction. If there's no reaction to salt, now I'm going to get down to the Lord's help me. It's starting to come back in on me now. If there's no reaction to it, then it's not worth much. If you put your hand in a bag of salty McDonald's French fries and that iodized salt does not make that hangnail burn, you ain't got no salt. There's a reaction to salt. It stings. We're going to say a word about its worth. And if there's no reaction, in other words, our lives ought to get some reaction from the world. If we're sitting among the crowd and it's not stinging them, if our lifestyle is not stinging the world, then look at me, you ain't got much salt in your life. There's worth in its life. There's worth in its length. I jotted down, jotted down there's worth in its lack. Because as it gets sparse, it makes it more valuable. We're living in a society where old time salty Christians are few and far between. We got a bunch of watered down ones. Anything goes ones, no stand, no position on anything. Everybody's right. Don't say uh, kumbaya. Let's burn candles at the ballpark. I love my wife, promise keepers, bunch of watered down. I'm against that bunch of watered down promise keeping watered down junk. I made a promise at an altar. I don't need to go burn candles with a bunch of men in a ballpark. You'd be better off burning candles with your life, wife at a steakhouse on Saturday night, burning a bunch of candles with men holding hands in a ballpark with a bunch of men. God bless your heart. Hey, man. That makes me want to. That's what I thought you'd say. But I, I'm looking because of the sparse, because of it's so hard to find. Uh, you, you, you wait, you, it's, it's easy, but there was a time in history where a bag of salt would be worth a man's life. A bag of salt, one bag, one large bag of salt could last a lifetime for a family. Wouldn't last long on my table. I mean, I go through a shaker just on one stake. Somebody say amen. Help me, neighbors. But the lack of it makes it more valuable. I'm going to tell you the worth. Do you, you don't, listen, we got to understand what we're trying to produce around here is worth something. Because you can't find it other places. Everything else is trying to water it down, take the sting out. We're trying to make it more savory. 
We're trying to make, hey, an old time religion that still stings. But nowadays, watch me, we've got a society, a religious society, hey, that's watered down the, I'm telling you, it ain't worth much. And when you find some real true salt, hey, there's no price tag that you can put on the real thing. And I don't like that almost salt and all that bunch of junk. I want the real thing. It tastes just like, everybody ever thinks somebody finds something tastes like chicken. Turtle tastes like chicken. My papa said it's nine, 12 pieces of meat in the turtle. And then he said it tastes, but it tastes like chicken. Frog legs taste like chicken. Everything, that, look up in there. I want something real. Something identifiable. Salt. There is a chemical makeup to salt. And when you take anything away from that element makeup or add to it, hey, you destroy its chemical makeup. It's a compound. I'm telling you, hey, it's sodium. It's this sodium nitrate, this salt. I, we got to have salt. We got to have salt. We got to have the real thing. Amen. We're trying to take away from it. The last three decades, we, they've been stealing from old time religion and pulling away the savor and pulling away the sting. And it makes the kind that's right more valuable. I, I, I don't think Murfreesboro understands how valuable Middle Tennessee Baptist Church is to them. God's withholding judgment on many of this town just cause the salt that's left here. I'm telling you, we're keeping the judgment of God off just a few salty Christians, just a few old widow women that still believe God and adhere to a King James Bible. Hey, the world really doesn't realize, America does not realize tonight, hey, the wealth and the worth of the salt, hey, if it wasn't for us, this place would go up and smoke tomorrow. It's the saint of God that withholds the judge, the salt of the earth. Salt and its worth. Number two, salt and its work. The work of salt, I believe, is to sanctify. I grew up before all the popular things. My, my, my mama acts like she ain't country, but man, both of my grannies was country. Mama and nanny. They was raised by country people. Anybody says crystal for crystal is country. Just write it down. If you say Walmart's for Walmart, you country. And mama acts like she don't know. A lot of times she puts on airs, but she knows all the she knows all that stuff. I'd get I'd get a sore sometime one of the one of the quick one of the first things they'd do when, when I'd get pus or what we'd call proud flesh. Has anybody ever heard that term lately? I, we run barefooted all our life. We uh, we gauged our manhood by how big of gravels you could sprint on. Tor, tar Hill, North Carolina. We Tar Hill, bless God, show sure enough. And a lot of times we'd stub our toe. And that old white flesh, that old proud flesh, is what it is, is rot. And, and I mean, there was several choices, but they'd always start with warm, salty water. Because it's, it's, an, it's an antiseptic. And that salt was a cleanser. They wash wounds with salty water. They cleanse the wound with salty water. I'm telling you where we are tonight, we need to realize that the work of salt is to sanitize. The world's not going to get any cleaner till the church gets more salty. The world's going to stay with rotten flesh all over them. They're going to stay in a state of decay until we start washing away some of that proud flesh with salt. I'm talking about warm, salty water. It's a, it's a sana, it, it, it has a work of, uh, uh, of to sanify, to, satis, uh, to, to, to sing, it has a work to save. Not only is it a work of, 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 of uh, to sanitize, I can't say the word, sanitize. I got fire hooked to that somehow. It's got a work to sanitize, but it's got a work to save. When you kill a hog in the fall and you're going to preserve him, you're going to keep him, you better have some salt nearby. I mean, you know, there's stages to it. You got, you got, first you got to get that 22 rifle. Buckwheat is convinced that you can't use a, a hollow point, but I believe a hollow point would kill him just as good as a, as a solid point. I believe a short would work as good as a long rifle. 
I'll be honest with you, I've seen them kill them with the butt end of an axe. One blow right between the eye. But Troy, Troy uses them, them solid point long rifle. And he can draw down on a hog. Talk! And I'm talking about right between the eye. And before that hog can, I'm, I'm talking about before he hits the ground good, Troy's done stuck him, got his up to his elbow under his throat. Y'all listen to me? And we drag him over there and we, we get him ready. If you're going to put him in the box, in the meat box, you're going to have to have some water ready to scald him. But that scalding is a good move, but it won't preserve. You say scalding kills the germs, yeah, but they won't stay killed. It works, it loosens the hair and you get your good piece of something to scrape with. Saw blade, piece of, piece of steel, you can scrape that hair off. Can I get a witness? We're getting spiritual now, folks. But the work of the salt is to preserve the meat. You better, if you, when, when you block out that ham, them sides, them shoulders, hey, you better make sure you put some salt down in them joints. I, I, my papa said, oh, the skippers should get in them. How many's ever heard that term? Y'all country. Them worms will get in there. Flies will lay up there and maggots will get on that meat. I'm going to tell you, you better, you better put some salt in it. And it's better to have too much it's not enough. You can soak a piece of country ham overnight and get some of the salt out of it. I'd rather have to soak it overnight and dilute, amen, where I can eat it and have it, it might be, but and have the ham than to, than to not put enough salt and then lose the ham. Hey, I'd rather have to wash it off two or three times and soak it overnight and save the ham than not say, let the rot take it over and lose it. And the work of the salt is to save. People think we're the problem. That's why the Elijah, thought, uh, Elijah was identified by Ahab. Or art thou the man that troubleth Israel? No, I'm not the one. You and your fathers are the one. I'm trying to save Israel. Uh, uh, old salty Elijah. When old Nathan went eyeball to eyeball with King David after he'd committed adultery with Bathsheba. Oh, Nathan, buddy, he butted him up and said, there's a man, had a little lamb. It was a pet lamb. And David, it's awful what this neighbor come, stole that lamb, killed that. And that man had a whole herd, a flock of sheep, and he killed that one baby little lamb. That was that pet lamb. And, and, said it was, and David said, who is that man that done that? Oh, Nathan was pretty salty when he said, thou art the man. Our leaders today are wanting to water us down. Because they, they, they bless God some borderline carnal. They got to have millions. They, they got to have millions to keep up their lifestyles. Hey man, they'll compromise at the drop of a hat. But what this world needs is some salt, my friend. Some salt, my friend. Salt's what saves. Compromise ain't going to save. I jotted this down. Salt seasons. It makes it better. Now some people don't like as much salt as others. Some like more than others. But I mean, the Bible itself said, does the white of an egg have any taste in Job? It's in Job. It ain't much. I don't like just a plain old boiled egg. I like boiled eggs, but I got to have a shaker of salt and pepper. It, it, eggs by themselves make you want to. But you take that egg and on that saucer, you done peeled two good brown country eggs and they're warm still. I'm starting, to, man, I'm about ready for, for spiritual. And you take a little salt and pepper and put it on the edge of that saucer and roll that egg in it. It'll make a bulldog break his chain. Somebody say amen. You know, because that salt season. I mean, what we, and by the way, don't put too much, God never intended for the whole shaker to be in one spot. It's anti-scriptural position for the one shaker. We're supposed to be sent out. We're salt. Hey, we're supposed to be slung all over this county. 
We come in here and get strengthened and then we get slung out all over Nissan and, and all over Saturn and all over a Gibson Guitar Company and all over 104.9 Solid Gospel and all over or a Riverdale High School and Oakland High School and all over John Pittard Elementary School and all, hey, all over the YMCA and we're slung out all over the county. What we do, we season. You'll have a hard time arguing with this in the house. The worth, the work, the warning to the salt. He said, if it's lost its savor, it's thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Quickly, there's the warning of diluted, dilution. I'm warning y'all right now, let's not apologize for what we are around here. Our children don't need us to hear us apologizing. It doesn't matter if they conform or don't conform or if they like it or don't like it. If it's right, it's always going to be right. And salt's been diluted. Our movements eat up with it. Well, we used to sing them songs. I, here's, here's a compromiser. Here's a, here's, a, here's a diluted salt. I cut my teeth on that. What they're saying, we don't do it anymore. That takes me back to my youth. Anybody talking that way is done gone. Here's one I heard the other day. One of our, one of our favorites made this statement. I come out of the camp meeting crowd. I come out of there. Well, bless God, I'm still in there. Don't want to come out. I'm not, I'm not embarrassed about it. But we become deluded. The warning is don't don't let don't let don't let modernism, don't let liberalism, don't don't let don't let the intellectualism water down the salt. Hey man. Y'all still with me? Uh, the warning is given of dilution. The warning is given of disrespect. You say, you know, Christianity's not respected anymore. It's our fault. I grew up respecting holiness people. We didn't, they didn't have United Pentecostal when I was a boy. They didn't have uh, all them titles. They, they, every woman that dressed modest, didn't wear makeup, and didn't cut her hair off like a G.I. Joe, like a stinking GI, like Dick Tracy. Look up in here. It, you know what we call them? Holiness. I, I used to walk around. My, my, we'd all get stiff. We'd be in Big Apple. And mama say, on that other aisle, there's a holiness woman. I wouldn't even look. I just. There was an awe. I don't even agree with their doctrine. They think you can be saved, lost, women preachers, not, not all of them, but some of them. The wrong ones believe that. But even with that, they used to, I mean, tell you, they, 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 had a, they, had, they, they had a respect of society. Now, I don't, they don't, no wonder we got these televisions they can't respect it because all their pawpaws was that way and now there anything goes. All your TV, come, they did come out of it. Their papas and grannies roll over in their grave what these charismatics on television come out of. Somebody help me. But I grew up with a respect. I'm talking about, friend, there was a respect to that crowd. I never heard my, though my daddy preached against tongue talking, preached against women preachers. He never made fun of those people. They was brothers and sisters. They, hey, one of his, one at, uh, at Mount, Mount Perrin Church of God down in Atlanta was one of my daddy's best friends, that pastor. One of the fastest growing churches in America. Him, him and daddy in Atlanta was the fastest growing church all them years. They, they preached funerals together. His wife, I'm talking about impeccable with her, with her modesty. Yeah. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Impeccable. Yeah. You know why we've lost our, our respect? Live like the world, look like the world, ain't got no steam. The warning is, hey, don't get trodden under. 
Christianity's trodden under today because there's no salt, there's no sting. A church that'll keep that sting. Amen. A church that'll keep that sting. Sinners are not supposed to be comfortable here. They're supposed to be welcome here. Backsliders are not supposed to be comfortable here. They're supposed to be welcome here. Whoremongers, adulteresses, and adulterers are not supposed to be comfortable here. They're supposed to be welcome here. We're trying to make everybody comfortable. And we've lost our savor. Like that preacher said, what you could do is just say, bless God, I'm against it. Boy, that's made me want to boil. Bless God, I'm against it. They can have their watered down things. All that leads to corrupt doctrine. Every bit of it leads to corrupt doctrine. Stay with me. The deception of it. If the salt had lost its savor, that it, you know, the decept- some of them still, you know, it can say salt on the shaker. I'll never forget, who was it, y'all? Stacia pulled that one on at the Mexican restaurant. Was that Joel or Gavin? Yeah, don't act like you don't know and God kill you. <laughs> she said, I don't know. Totally. They take the top off the salt and put sugar all in it. You've had it done. Or take the sugar thing off, put something on, mix your sweet tea up. You ever been surprised? How many have had it pulled on you? They changed the label. Well, what's happening now, we're not changing the label, we're just changing the content. It still says church. It still says Baptist. But you get in there and ain't no salt. All it is is old syrupy sugar. Anything that'll get another million dollars. Anything that'll build another building with a name on it. Anything that'll finance some more and buy another BMW. Amen. Just put a little sugar in it. We'll call it salt. Nobody will ever know. Don't you be deceived in these last days. Everything says church ain't church. Everything says Baptist ain't Baptist. Everything says fundamental ain't fundamental. I'm, I'm learning. I'm, I've been knowing it, but I just I wished I, I wished it wasn't true. But it's true. All right, we salt. But wait a minute, we're light. Can y'all handle light a little bit, or is that enough for tonight? <laughs> you see who's spiritual and who ain't when you ask that. Then there's other, come on. I don't think I'll do justice unless I finish at least three. I'll never get out of Matthew if I don't finish these next two or three verses. Now, there ain't no doubt we saw it. Has this, made, has, this, has this become any way applicable to people in here say, I? Oh, help us learn something right here. But now, some of y'all ain't gonna like this next one. Because you didn't quite get what I say on the first one, but the next one, there'll be no question about what I mean. So now you're the light of the world. If you're not careful, those word, that word ye are, could be prestigious. Because in other writings, Jesus said, I am. I'm the light of the world. But now he said, you're the light of the world. At one time he was, but now we've become the light. Now, There's a prestige that accompanies this. I want you to see that the very first thing that God created was light. There's there's something about the first in Bible study. The first mention in Bible study. Let there be first thing. There must have been a priority behind that because everything spawns from light. light. No growth, no life without 
Light, as, as I'm telling you, it's essential. We, we had some hogs. We, we weaned off a sow and put it in a low log crib and put some slats in the logs. We kept the sun from getting in there. Weaned them off. They just in there and feed them all they could eat. They had little old wormy looking things. Wormed them. But Mac, as soon as we turned them out in the sunlight, I've cut back on my feed. And them jokers is growing, I'm telling you, it's swelling up. Because light is a priority. Amen. Amen. Stay with me. First thing God makes life, there's some prestige to it. But wait just a minute. With any position of prestige, God always couples a precept. Let your light. Let's look at it. Don't y'all act like I'm not in it. We in there. You're the light of the world. He goes on to say, verse 16, what? Let. If God's going to give us a position, he's expecting a product. Let your light so shine before men. This shining, we're likened to salt, we're likened to a shining. We're going to have to do some letting. And here's the thing. It didn't say make your light shine because you can't make it shine. That's preaching. I, I, that's got to help somebody. A lot of people's trying to make their light shine. It ain't working good. Ye, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me. It, it's a subconscious thing. If it's in you, it's going to come out. We're trying to make teenagers be Christians. Going to send them to a Christian school to make them Christians. Make them shine. I'm just going to tell you, if they're saved, they're going to shine. They'll shine anywhere you put. Saved people are going to shine anywhere you put them. And they shine the brightest in the darkest spot. Hey, man. That's, that's truth. Let it shine, not make it shine. In other words, if you'll just do what you're supposed to do, it's going to shine. If you'll just live like you, it's going, you can't help it. From whatever you do, if you'll do, if you'll, you'll let it will shine. Unless we do some bad things, there is a prestige, but that prestige accompanies a precept, a teaching of God's word. Let it shine, and notice the place to decide. Let it shine in the living room of your home school. Let it shine in the halls of your Christian school. Let it shine in the, uh, the, 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 the classrooms of your Bible colleges. Let it shine on Sunday morning in the auditorium. I, that ain't what I'm reading. Let it shine in Sunday school. I don't want mine reads. Let your light so shine before. Man, that always, when it's in the contrast of you and men, men's are lost. Men are lost, you're saved. Anytime you see it in that, in that setting, men are always likened to unsaved men. Don't get nervous. I was preaching before anybody come, I'll preach you when everybody leaves. This is the truth, whether you like it or not. Put it in your pipe and smoke it, bless God. Hey, I'm telling you, let it shine before. Well, you say, well, if you're not, tell me where you're letting your shine then. Where are you, if you're not doing some of these places on the work, you know, I, I think some of these churches and Christian colleges think everybody's going to be hired by a church. Everybody ain't going to get a job on staff. Especially when they make us start, when Obamacare comes in, all in bud. Y'all, here's a prediction. Watch this. As soon as Obamacare, if it does get kicked in, watch these ministries go to where we're using lay people. 
You watch them, all of a sudden they're going to start believing like I've been believing because they can't pay the salaries. They can't pay the salaries plus the health insurance on every Christian school teacher they got and the principal and the coach and the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, eighth grade. They can't, they can't even pay it on the preacher. We can't even pay it on him. And they're going to find out. Is everybody listening? Hey, it's preaching time now. And they're going to start going back to, you know, part time. That's going to be their way to get around that insurance anyway. We hired him part time. Y'all looking at me awful confounded and I'm preaching the truth. They're going to have to pay it pretty soon and it's going to shut the doors on a lot of these, these organizations that are not organisms. You won't have to worry about the door of the church shutting down when they, apply, when they, when they implement Obamacare. The church won't have to shut down. Because that's what Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against. But I tell you, there'll be some of these organizations that shut down. And they think we're wicked because our kids go to public school. And I think we're right. They look at me cockeyed, but they still ask me to their meetings. Is everybody okay? Fella asked at a question and answer session up at that pastor school said, now what, how do you, after you start winning people, how do you make the transition between, so how long after they get saved do you try to get them out of the public school into the Christian school? And it was my turn. Uh, how do I get in these predicaments? I leaned over to Dr. Scott at the president. I said, you really, I said, you understand? I don't even believe in it. So do you, you really want me to answer this? He said, man, yeah. I said, you sure? I said, you positive? He said, and, and, and he follows it. I, I, he said, yeah. I said, okay, here we go. I said, when he gets saved, when are you going to pull him off the job at Saturn? When he gets saved, when are you going to pull it? When are you going to pull him? I said, wait a minute now. When I got through, Scott said, well, he said, I went to public school. He said, David Gibbs went to public school. Clarence Sexton went to public school. He said, what's that? Raymond Hancock went to public school. He said, I only have three men on my staff that I think didn't go to public school. He said, we might ought to go back to it. Is everybody listening? I didn't say anything, but bless God, I'm for it. Amen. Let your light so shine before who? I, not, not, not granny. Amen. Not in your back room. Don't get mad. I, y'all ought to know. Listen, you ain't putting no bit in my mouth, hoss. We've been strategically located as light. And the place where to shine is before. How are you going to shine before men with a bushel hidden? Under a bushel. We're lighting our candle and then hiding it with all kind of bushels. And calling it spiritual. And ain't got a Bible verse for a lot of it. That school that, that you know, teaching them to observe all things. whatsoever command, All things does not include geometry. What all things whatsoever I've commanded you. He didn't command us to study geometry and algebra. Thank God somebody say amen for that. Don't get excited, but I'm glad I ain't got to teach algebra. All things whatsoever I've commanded you. What he commanded us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And we're supposed to be teaching them that. Be honest, my child would be better off with an atheist teaching them, knowing that atheism is wrong and wicked, than to have some Christian cloaked that's out here going to the movies on, on, on the staff at the, and messing up and, and undermining authority and making fun of shouting Baptist women and making fun of our kind of music. Go sing a Stamps Baxter song at one of them fine arts festivals to see how high you get ranked. Pull a fiddle out instead of a violin and see how high you get ranked at the fine arts, fine arts, fine arts, fine arts, fine arts bunch of fine arts. Hey, man. 
had. Bunch of Bo Bo Taven, Bo Haven, what's his name? Beethoven. When I don't like people, I I call them another name. Somebody say amen. Everybody okay? Wizard of Oz music. You got to have something dead to make it, to get any grades. They got to be dead as a hammer. You can't cry or stop because you can't raise your hand in the choir because that draws attention to you. You can't shout because you'll mess everybody up. God ain't within a thousand miles of that doings. Amen. But the salt and the light have been strategically placed on a hill. We're to be seen. You say, my child ain't ready. He'll never get ready. You think he's just going to turn 18 and all of a sudden he's ready now to go into the world? Boop, I'm ready now. They're the first ones to jump the fence. They're the first ones to go against modesty. How come these bus kids, uh, how, how come I'm looking at Audrey and, and Stephanie? They, they don't wear britches around here, a bunch of sprayed on britches. Their parents don't even go to church here. I, walked, I saw Stephanie walking across the campus of MTSU. Man, it, I just I felt cold chills. Long skirt, Amen. modest. Amen. Everybody okay? Amen. How come? How come that crowd? First thing they do when they get out of that Christian school, you can't even find them in church. Jump a fence like a wild deer, chum gone. First temptation comes. First, first, first sexual encounter offer. Lose the purity. Because we got them so scared you can't even look at one another. That's all. That's, I'm sick of going to these youth meetings. It's time I want to preach a little bit. I'm so tired of going to these youth meetings and all they want to talk about is sex all the time. Every youth meeting, all you want to talk about is getting married, finding the right mate, finding the right mate. And don't worry about that right now. Do your homework. Go play ball. Go play football. And then go play football, boy. Don't worry, but it ain't time for that. Play baseball. Girls, go to the ball game and, and clap your hands for the team. Don't worry about that other stuff right now. They got, they got 12-year-old girls reading bridal magazines. All they think about who they going to marry. That's all I hear. Next time I'm going to tell any of we ain't having that doings. Amen. Marry a safe person. Amen. Date safe people. Yes. And don't complicate all this stuff. Amen. Had somebody in the, in the nursery, Brother Vaughn, come, I'll never forget it. It just plagued my mind. I have nightmares about this. She come running out of that nursery. She said, Brother Hudson, she said, a, a young boy has touched my daughter. Well, y'all know I can't think but the worst thing. Help me. A young boy has touched my daughter. I'm thinking, man, man, we're we going to have to arrest this dude. I get back in the thing, come to find out it was a three-year-old boy in the nursery, and I ain't talking about fondled her, just touched the daughter playing. Look up in here. It's all right. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Nothing happened. You, that's a little bit too early to worry about it. What that is is weirdness. I said it's weirdness with a capital W. Hey Amen. Y'all need to know them. You say, we don't have it. But I don't want them creeping in here because they're creepy. They're creepy. Looking for something to be weird about. That's pretty. You ain't got, I ain't heard no amen out of you in a long time. You ain't got to like it. It's right whether you like it or not. We put so much, we got them so in their mind, they're warped. Hey Amen. The place is before men. Where our families are to be seen before men. Hey, our lifestyles are to be seen before men. Not hid in a closet. Not hid in a block room somewhere. Hey, the world's supposed to see us. 
They're not seeing enough of us. I was there when they started Christian education. I was, I was there when they, they started it over racism. The motive was wrong in the 70s. All them racist deacons come to my daddy. Everything's just fine. All them racist deacons come to my daddy, put him under pressure, said, we got to start. They didn't call them Christian schools. They called them private schools. When Martin Luther King Jr. started marching, everybody take a big deep breath, say, everything will be fine. Y'all need to know some of this. If the motive's not right, I'm sure there's such a thing as a right kind. Hey, but it better be the right kind. Motive was wrong. Started it wrong. Now the product's wrong. Amen, Brother Tony. Thank you very much, and I appreciate that. We, the law, in the 19th, prior to the Christian school movement, the largest independent Baptist, the largest church in the world were independent Baptist churches. Just go do your history. The largest ones were independent Baptist churches. As soon as we become isolated instead of separated. You can be in the world, but not of the world. As soon as we became, it started dwindling over the last three decades, 40 years, say four decades. We've lost, nobody even knows, they don't, they don't even know we're here. We're a subculture. People don't even know there's such a thing. If they thought that we were here tonight, they'd come close us down, lock me up. They don't even know we're here anymore. Used to, hey, before that, we could vote down liquor. Because there was a presence. There was saltiness. There was light. Light hurts eyes that are in darkness, makes them squint. But when you hide it under them bushels, you can't see it under them bushels. I wonder what bushel are you hiding your light under and calling it religious and cloaking it as something good. Amen, Brother Tony. Thank you very much. I appreciate you taking that stand. There's a pattern. Notice this. There's a pattern that they may see your good works. Good works is the pattern. They may see your good works. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Watch me. We're supposed to be seen. I will say a word to this whole country. Christians ought to be at Friday night football games, dressed right, Amen. looking right, with tracks in their hand. Amen. You wouldn't believe the accountability. You'll, you'll see, it, it would put a chance. I've had girls in our church, in our youth departments, when I'd show up at them Friday night games, I'm not talking about just the world, just our church. They wouldn't even, I mean, there ain't but two ways to go at a stadium. You understand? That you got the you got the guest team or you got the home team. And at the stadium, there's only one entrance on each end of Rutherford County High School Stadiums. You know, they got to come by you. Well, I usually position myself on the first seat on the front row. You wouldn't believe people looking up like they couldn't see me, act, trying to hide behind other people. And some of them wouldn't even come up. They'd start passing the word, don't go over there, Brother Tony's over there. With the, with the hot pants on, hot britches on. They all, any woman wearing hot britches. Look up in here. If you're carnal or unsaved enough to wear hot britches, you ought to be nervous to walk by me at a ball game. Amen. Amen. And these teenagers got these sprayed on tops and some of you girls, I want y'all to listen to me. Hey, quit buying these things so small. They're not supposed to be for babies to wear. Wear clothes that'll fit you, bless God. What do you want them to do, lust after you? They're supposed to be nervous to walk by me. You say, you ain't hit that in a while, about time. Come on by. They don't want to come by. They want to look. Man, they can't talk for five minutes. You talk about and catch them. Oh, they get embarrassed. You can't pull hot britches down long enough 
You can't pull hot breeches down long enough or mini skirts. You can't, pull, you, you can't pull mini skirts down long enough to cover up what you're showing. If you've got to walk around and tug on it all the time, bless God, it's too short. Can't sit down without a sweater to carry with you in July. Help me. Light supposed to be seen. We ought to be we ought to be around, man. We've dug in like a bunch of militia, Christian militia, gonna go move up somewhere in Upper Peninsula, Michigan, teach your wife to shoot a gun. Let me say, do not teach my wife to shoot a gun. <laughs> Brother Vaughn gives her a switchblade. You don't give Mexican people switchblades. And surely to God, don't give her gun licenses. Somebody help me. Help me, somebody. That's not what they need. We need some accountability. We need some light so men will see us and backsliders will see us. You say, why don't you go get so-and-so back in church? Because they don't want to come back to church. Why do you think they left? They didn't leave because their wife was so modest. Somebody help me. Help me. Light shines. Light shines as a pattern for light. I ain't through. Can y'all handle this a little bit more? The prevention of light. Put it under a bushel. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to be real about it. And you, you don't have to like this. You can lump this. But what, what's covering up your bushel? Something obviously can cover up. What's covering up your light? Now, if it's not covered, say hallelujah. Yeah, you know, you understand what I'm talking about? But what is covering up your light? There's something to this. You know, this is the King James Bible. He must have known that these bunch of religious people were going to get pharisaical and start thinking they're better than everybody else. And my kids are too good for that. And my family's too good for that. And we're just going to be little hideouts, little undercover. So he said... Don't let something cover you up. I don't care how good it looks, don't let it cover up your light. I don't care how religious it's promoted, don't let it cover up. No matter how long it's been promoted, don't let it cover it. If you got to change, change. But don't cover up your light. Don't cover up your light. Don't hide your light. The world needs to see the light. Amen, Brother Tony. Watch this. That they may what? See your good works. The purpose of the light. The world's been blinded in darkness. The God of this world hath blinded that they should not see the glorious light of the gospel. Now, we talked about a light, right? Who lights a candle? Remember that candle? It talks about a candlestick in this text. Let's look at it just a minute. Turn over there. Neither light man a candle. But to put it on a candlestick. They don't hide it under a bushel, but they put it on a what? A candlestick. Revelations. He writes in chapter 2 to the churches. The seven churches of the golden candlestick. You say, what about that light? Well, our light ought to be getting renewed right here at this candlestick. This is the candlestick. The local church, look at me, the local church ought to be the heartbeat of your life. Amen. The nucleus of what you do. Amen. The local church has been beat up, undermined by the best of them, religious crowd. I mean, I mean, don't get mad, and I appreciate some of the songs, but old Bill Gaither's undermined her. 
Don't get mad. He's wrote, we sang his songs, going to keep singing his songs. Appreciate what he's wrote. But, but I mean, it, it's all about, I mean, it, local, where's local church fit into that junk? Just come spend two weekends with us away, take your tithe money to do it. Help me somebody. Bill Gothard, he's done it too with his philosophies. Come to, our, come to advanced seminar, basic seminar, do this cigar. Come over here and the bachelor try and tell us how to raise our children. Ain't no bachelor going to tell me how to live with a woman. That ain't working. Unless he has to live through it, God help. He ain't got nothing. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe the tax on the local church undermining the authority of the local. But where the focus and nucleus of our life ought to be is this place. This is where the candlestick ought to be. I'm saying, the light, you, get, you get some light, take it back out to the world, will you? Come in here on Sunday and get, get a good dose. Clean your globe off. Some of you never, some of you, people don't even watch Westerns anymore, do they? Does anybody watch Westerns? I got one channel on my television, my television, it's nothing but Westerns. Y'all pray for me, but I'm not giving that up right yet. Y'all pray God will give me victory. But that channel 160 ain't nothing but Westerns. <laughs> they, they take them globes off and clean them. That wagon train, y'all remember that? Wagons, ho! Man, I like it. Don't, I'm not trying to lead y'all wrong. If you got a conviction, don't watch it. But I'm watching that Ward Bond on wagon train. Have gun, will travel. Paladin. I like gun smoke. I believe gun smoke's might near sacred. I mean, I wish Miss Kitty would get saved. Somebody say amen. Where was I? But they cleaned them globes out. We've never, but most of this generation had electricity. But there's t some of y'all remember having to clean the globe out on the but what we ought to come on Sunday, get the globe clean. Yes. Get filled up with oil. Yes. And leave out of here with salt and light. And so we're going to reach somebody. Amen. We're going to tell somebody. Amen. We're going to find a family that needs something. Amen. Amen, brother. Good. Well, you tell me what you think about it later. But it was my time to preach tonight. Our Heavenly Father, take truth and set us free.